All right, good morning, everybody. Ho hopefully you're uh, having a great as a show and um, want to take a little bit of time to, uh, to just talk about the evolution of access control, which is uh, it's certainly an evolving story. You know, the industry tends to move a little bit slower than, than an IT industry and, and how we move technology. And so that creates some challenges. Uh, so, you know, certainly the, the story begins mostly with a, a serial world of communication. And, uh, you know, and that segregates us from really dealing with a lot of the day-to-day -day IT challenges. And so ultimately, we want to understand now that things really are living in an IP space, what does that mean for our industry? You know, we got to know what the environment is. We have to figure out and plan how we move because there's a lot of legacy equipment that's sitting out there in our in our uh, security network. And ultimately, it's about budgeting, the planning tools, all the things that are going to be necessary to do this as smooth as possible and have least impact on customers using security. Uh, so ultimately, starting off with the environment, it, it's understanding the new challenges that we're faced with day to day. Uh, so in, in the example that we have here really showing, for instance, an interior versus an exterior door. When now we're faced with the idea of exposing a network drop to connect a reader back to the head end access control, that network drop potentially exposes a vulnerability to a corporate network. And we all know the sensitivity of data and privacy and the so these challenges now become a, a, real, um, a real consideration in what we're doing for the design of the readers at the door. And we can't be looking at one universal solution for the inside versus the outside because of what we're potentially exposing in an IT space. As well, some of the, the, the challenges we're faced with is it's not just wired network, but there's a lot of demand and certainly walking around the, the trade show today you'll see all kinds of wireless solutions for locks. And those also bring some new challenges to deal with because the reliability of Wi-Fi is not as good as wired. And so we have to think about when we're connecting wireless locks and, and ultimately the availability of that, are they able to store local credentials or when we lose connectivity, are the locks gonna lose operation? And so we have to really think about the type of doors that we're installing uh, to make sure that if, it, if it's a high critical area, like say for instance an operating room or the main front door or turnstiles, that we're not putting in a solution that ultimately is backing people up because that's the one interface that people are really seeing when it comes to the access control. So extremely important. And then the other side of this is it's no longer the serial communication, it is a network. And so a lot of the things that we're doing are working on different ports. Some ports are a lot more sensitive than others to the IT community. And so we need to make sure that we're thinking about before the deployment of these, that we have the right firewall restrictions, the right privileges, permissions, all those type of things that really are an IT way of thinking apply to our access control solutions. And if we get that wrong, then again, you know, we're, we're potentially inhibiting people getting through doors or not through doors as we need to. So again, moving on to some of the higher parts of security, right? Now, now it's not just about uh, using passwords to be able to log on to something. It's, you know, it, it's beyond using homegrown algorithms. You know, today, when you're really going into high secure environments and, and IT is looking at it, they want to know about encryption and how strong is your encryption and how are we doing things like certificate management. So, and it's also a question of how far are we going? Is it, is it just okay enough to have encryption between the client and the server? Or are they really truly looking for end-to-end -end encryption to include everything on the card all the way to the head-end system? And so this becomes really vitally important. And, and things that we're not used to in this community thinking about is, is that certificate management. A, who owns it? How do we handle when the certificate expires or needs to be reissued and we deploy that because it's a complicated network. So all of these things are, are new challenges that we're faced with and, all, and we want to be able to make sure that what we're communicating and am able to provide is a solution for access control that doesn't expose vulnerabilities to the sensitive data that might be sitting in a corporate network. Uh, beyond that, we start to get into conversations of, of the bigger uh, environment. So for instance, if you're looking at video solutions today, it's very common. Most of the websites you're going to go to are going to provide some type of bandwidth estimator. 
And so you can say, I'm going to have this many cameras. I anticipate this much motion. I anticipate uh, you know, this, this level of quality. And it, and it gives you an idea of the bandwidth. Well, in access control, again, that's kind of been a, a, a tougher challenge. There are more variables. And we're thinking about the number of transactions per second. And in this industry, that's a lot more than most people think it is. So let's think about a normal door admit. So I walk up, I present my credential, it's Jason Willett, access granted. That's one transaction. But the door, just in a simple form, is gonna have a door state monitor. That's gonna separate, the contact goes open, it's gonna then close, and then there might be a request to exit on the back side of the door, and as I'm walking through the field of view of this motion sensor, five or six times the motion sensor's clicking off. So I literally could be doing eight to 12 transactions just for a normal door admit. Now say I have 100,000 credentials walking around and it's nine o'clock in the morning, everybody's rushing in and the amount of transactions that we've generated just for basic door, right? So, so uh, I've run across one customer, you know, more in an enterprise space and, and they provide uh, free breakfast for all their employees. So the morning was quite busy for them and literally they were reaching somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 120 transactions per second during that one hour in the morning, which is, it's enormous. But when we looked at it and we tuned the performance of the access control, we were able to say that the, the contact opening and closing, we don't really need to know about that. I need to know Jason Willett went through the door and what time, and I don't need to know about the request to exit. When we started to filter those type of problems out, it dropped to 18 transactions per second from 100. So again, when we're looking at the environment, knowing how it all works, it's very key to, to get into that detail and understand how we can tell the IT community this is the bandwidth we're going to need. And being able to be efficient and effective about what we're sending and when means we can do better performance. Also, what are you doing with, with things like images? How high quality are you presenting? For instance, a lot of times what we see in the industry is you might have a kiosk sitting at uh, an elevator lobby and they have guards posted there literally looking to do a swipe and show. I want to see your face as you're coming through. But depending on how you're handling the delivery of those images, if you're piping it from the server to the client every time, again, bandwidth issues. So you want to look at how those problems are being solved and, and again, plan for the infrastructure necessary to provide the solution. Uh, and then we also get to the things that have nothing to do with our control. So let's say for instance, and, and I've definitely seen this happen, where at 2 a.m. on the corporate network, they're doing their massive backups of everything, and all of a sudden, the door control modules go into comm failure. Simply because, again, the amount of data they're moving across their corporate network, there wasn't enough bandwidth left to do access control, and so things start timing out. So we need to look even a little bit deeper when, for instance, we're not on a private network, but we're, we're running on a main corporate network, that we're looking at the whole day and all of the activity to ensure that we're not gonna have service interruption within our access control. Uh, and then as well, we wanna be able to make sure that we have solutions that today in an IT world, they're gonna be looking at uh, things like VMware and, and uh, uh, vMotion to be able to move a virtual machine from one server to another in a disaster scenario. You've got solutions like Stratus doing the uh, hardware fault tolerance and so, or Microsoft SQL clustering. So all these type of things are, you know, we haven't really had to deal with in a traditional access control, but today are fundamentally a part of a solution that we're providing for high availability. So again, you gotta know the environment, you have to have a solid plan. And you also wanna look for a provider that has the tools to make you successful. So ultimately, for instance, with uh, Tyco Security Products, we have our smart services division. And there are four parts of that really aimed at from beginning to end, making sure that we're providing information and helping to make the migration forward in the evolution of access control easier. So you have the discovery group, which is really pointed at the consultants, helping to make sure they know how to answer specifications and provide the right solutions. Uh, we have our professional services group that can be right there to help go through the complication of moving data between maybe a legacy access control to a newer state or the art. Uh, you know, which, which could, you know, there's no one solution that fits all. A lot of times it's different schemas, different ways to solve the problems. And so it's a level of expertise that's doing it every day that can help out. And then we have a Vantage program, which is really at the integrator level. So when you're selecting an integrator that's gonna be involved with the job, you know that they're enterprise certified or they're, you know, they're 
single server certified and you have the right level of expertise, that's the first level response. And at the end is our education program, which goes all the way to the end user even, making sure that everybody knows how the product's gonna operate and, and how to appropriately respond to some of the problems they're gonna be faced with in their own environments. Uh, budgeting is a key point. When you're doing an evolution, you know, we have to look at if there is gonna be a level of hardware replacement that needs to happen. Likely that's not gonna happen all in one year, so this phases over time. And so that'll present some other challenges that we need to solve and we'll talk about in a moment. And so you have to plan this carefully because ultimately what we're looking to do is to not have service interruption to our customers while we're making this, right? The idea would be that the, they have their credential and they have no idea that we've just evolved into a full IP solution. To them, they're getting through the door and everything is working really well. So then it's about the tools, right? It's the migrating of data back and forth between maybe systems that you're converting or from an older software to a newer software. Uh, it, it's looking at how you can handle things like replication. So if I have two systems running for a period of time and let's say that I have 500 door control modules, I may be cutting 30 of those over a week, but in the meantime, I'm running two access control systems. Does that mean I have to do dual entry of badging? That's a lot of extra work on the customer. So you wanna look for ways that you might be able to do card replication so that I can only do badging in one place, but it's synchronizing the newer system while I'm doing the cutover and over time, then that can go away. And again, so it's, it's kind of transparent and less painful on the end user. Uh, you also want to look for, uh, if you do have to replace hardware, how do we minimize the impact of that, right? So, uh, for instance, we have a, a conversion kit for, uh, for the CASI microboards, where you can keep the, the readers that are out at the door and all the door investment. You take the, the uh, control module itself, the CAN, and we are, we're able to put an iStar Pro controller in the same exact footprint with a conversion kit, and so it's just the controller that allows uh, you know, a solid communication back to the new head end, but again, protecting the investment at the door. So those type of things, when you're going into conversion, become very valuable. It helps lower the cost and ease the transition when you're going from old to new. And then ultimately, where is this evolution all going? So IP is the standard today, but you walk around this floor and you're gonna see the words all over the place. It's all cloud, right? So tomorrow, is how are we using the cloud to provide better service? And, and what, you know, one way I would kind of describe it is it's kind of the old days of the mainframe and a dumb terminal, but today it's the cloud and either an iPad or some sort of smartphone, smart intelligent device that's out on the edge. And so this is the next evolution. And, and you know, as you're looking to service customers and, and provide solutions, those are the type of things you're looking for, right? How, how can some uh, uh, access control provider be as agnostic to cloud solutions as possible? So you're not pigeonholed to, it's gotta be a Microsoft Azure or, or it needs to be uh, Amazon cloud that, you know, that whatever the customer is using for a cloud solution, you can bring your access control to. So that's definitely the, the direction that, that the head end is heading. And on the edge, it's really about the intelligence, better analytics, you know, being able to, at the door, have much more intelligence, uh, be able to do even possibly event management right at the edge. So these are all key things about where the access control market is, is heading to and things to think about in your planning of the evolution. So uh, that's what I have today. And, and certainly at this point, I'd like to open up. If there's any questions that you have, I'd, I'd be glad to try to address those. All right, take care.